Welcome, everybody, and thank you for being here. Um, we are Dreaming Beyond AI, and we are very excited to be able to present to you all in a bit more detail our work, our team, our vision, and the ideation of the project in the first place. Uh, I'm sure that some of you were already part of the residence presentation, so this is a bit, uh, you know, in, in a different time space that we wanted to take time to um, present the work in a bit more details, like I said. Uh, so my name is Sarah. Uh, I do comms for Dreaming Beyond AI, and so I'll just be, you know, bringing us into uh, the presentation today and um, let my my dear colleagues introduce themselves in a little while. Maybe just to start with, uh, to let you know that Dreaming Beyond AI is a collective based in many different parts of Europe. All of us work mostly digitally, and we do have um, a time to meet as well in person a few times a year. And we've been together, uh, working together for now about three years. And we are um, a collaborative space, collective, and we try to question the way we uh, relation with AI, technology, algorithm, making sure also that we can um, bring margins as our center and normalize that. Um, Yes, I think that was mostly what was meant to be said for the very, very first introduction. Um, there's a lot that we do in terms of um, the way these things has been created. So you'll see that in the presentation, there's a flow into like how did Dreaming Beyond AI came to be, who's behind it, uh, why did we even work on a residency this year and where we are now. So yes, a little video to introduce. We are a bit other. We are each other. This is the bridge that we need to cross. The bridge between I and I, between you and me, between us and them, between the machine and the living, between the living and the dead, between the sea and the sky, between the stones and the plants, between the earth and the cosmos, between the creator and the creation. This is our journey to cross that bridge and as we walk through it for many lifetimes after lifetimes, we make it smaller and smaller until it needs not be anymore. And when it is no more, we are no more. We are free. We become everything. The topics are intersectionality, the topics are queerness, the topics are black futures, Afrofuturism, fictional visions, alternative realities, the topics would be community love, the topic would be sisterhood, the topics would be feminism, radical love actually, algorithmic oppression. Just like you see within the poetry, there's something around, it can't just be it. It can't just be what we're going through right now. And how do we make sure that we have the space to dream of something that is beyond what's the current reality? My name is Ala Pop. I don't use pronouns. I'm a digital media and performance artist. I'm queer and non-binary, white and able, tech positive feminist, interested in technological and inclusive uh, visions of the future. Hello, I am Zassi Rue. I'm an artist based in Paris. Hi, my name is Moises Horta Valenzuela and I'm an artist from Tijuana, Mexico, working with generative neural networks. Hello everyone, I'm Mazzina. I'm an electronic music producer under the name of Tadli. Hey, my name is Petty Ivanova. Together with Neyma Githeri, we contributed the carrier back on mycelial memory and mycelial intelligence to Dreaming Beyond AI. Hi, my name is Charlie, and I wrote about algorithms that claim to classify people's gender, typically from their face, and why that's a problem. Hi, I'm Adrian. And I'm Carla, and together we are Internet Teapot. Hi, this is Ola. Hi everyone, my name is Edith Galip and I contributed a piece about memes, platforms and content moderation to the Dreaming Beyond AI project. My name is Sarah Chanda and I'm working at the intersection between AI policy and racial justice. Like Adrienne Marie Brown says, and I, I would like to quote her now because this quote has influenced me so massively. We have the gift and the responsibility to imagine and yes, this is a dark age, and a darkness such as this is the perfect setting for our dreams. 
Visionary fiction is a way to shape dreams of justice, to understand that art is not neutral and that what we dream and create is a practice ground for the futures we need. All right. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. So Dreaming Beyond AI is a collective of projects, but there are actual humans behind it. And so, uh, unfortunately, Busse could not be uh, with us today, but we have baby E over here. That I'm going to let introduce herself. Hi, hello everybody. My name is Io Bisek and for Dreaming Beyond AI, I did the website. I did also uh, all the communications that you can see, not the communications, uh, but all the visual and uh, the art direction. Hi, I'm Nusheen. I'm hopping in between tasks for Dreaming Beyond AI. Um, I'm doing project management and curation and also supporting these amazing humans. Thank you so much. So talking about jumping in between. So like I said, my name is Sarah. I do the communications for Dreaming Beyond AI. Since I'm on stage now, I can't take photos. So please take some photos. <laughs> and if you post on Instagram, tag Dreaming Beyond AI. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. And we also have Vanessa, our beloved um, creative sparring partner. There were five amazing people that we had that, we saw, that you saw on the, on the video. And uh, we have the privilege to have Vanessa with us today, which I'm going to let her introduce herself. Thank you. I'm Vanessa Moapoku. I work as an artist and I'm based in Berlin. And um, I contributed a work to the Dreaming Beyond AI platform. And also I was a sparing partner in this project, in this um, presidency. Thank you so much. Yeah, so just to also say that we all work with um, really, really strong values from the very beginning and uh, the video touched uh, on it a little bit. But we're very, very strong on feminism, the values around uh, decolonial approaches, um, queerness, and just making sure that we can, um, like I said earlier, really, really, really making the margins our center. So there's no coincidence that people within our team, people within the contributors that you see here, um, the residents as well, you know, we work with the majority of people who are, um, you know, racialized, queer. Uh, some of us have a story with uh, migration. Some of us live with disabilities. Some of us, you know, live in precarious ways so all of these intersections are really important to us and to our work um, there is a uh, massive diversity of people that we have worked with uh, the the project started with a few people contributors again also diversity in terms of their um, expertise experience background we do have some artists some activists we have some people working with policy we have some people who are writers um, which is why also in terms of what was created for the platform we didn't want to have like what is a lot of the time uh, out there in terms of you know mainstream uh, subject related to AI tech and algorithm, which is massive, unreadable academic paper or three hours long conversations in conferences that nobody wants to listen to. And so we have a mix, right? So some people came in, they wrote a little, some something. Some people work together to have a mix of like a podcast and you know some video and things that people could digest access and that is much more relatable as well, uh, which was very important to us. And yes, um, super, super important to us to thank all of the people who make sure that this became a reality. And so um, very, very initially, Nushin started with a Landeker Democracy um, Fellowship. That's where the idea was, um, you know, started, uh, thought about with no name back in the days. And then the collaboration with Busse started and then the collaboration with Ifa through that uh, duo started as well. Shout out to Ifa, shout out to Clemens who's in the room. Ifa, yes. Woo -hoo -hoo. Thank you. And so I think the collab has been three years now with Ifano, yes, um, which has been really, really wonderful and super supportive to us. So thank you so much. And more recently, the collaboration with uh, Camp Nagel and Daesh Dohalen, because we were able to be the host for the Oast Ease residency, which also has been fabulous. So thank you so much um, to all of the partners. Thanks. Woo -woo -woo. Thank you. And I will now hand uh, to beloved EO to talk to you all a bit more about the design, ideation, and all the research that comes into that. Yes, so actually the project was uh, also started with uh, creating a platform where we can collect actually all these beautiful creations for all the contributors. 
And the design was very, really relying on the notion of pre-reverse. So a world where other worlds can coexist with, din with dignity and peace. And we, as a subject, can uh, just be free of uh, domination, exploitation. And so um, the idea behind his platform was to create a 3D environment when we can just navigate actually and discover all the amazing uh, creation and just make change point of view. Uh, all the career back can be linked actually with tags, not only with team. And it was really important for us actually to just uh, be able to carry uh, with this platform all the creation. So one of the notions that helps the creative process was the notion of fluidity that you can find again in some projects in the residency, but it was really important to focus on fluidity because fluidity is what we are. Uh, we are uh, really mixed of a different identity that can have different influence through the context that we are in. And so using the idea of water as a principal element to just represent the fluidity was like something that was very important to us. And what we like is with fluidity is also the possibility for transformation and for also growing and for also like taking shape and shape and shape. Uh, so on the design process as well, it was very important to just also focus on hope. Uh, that's why there is a lot of color and that's why that black like, there is like a, this kind of maybe dreamy uh, atmosphere because it was like important to say that as we say a lot today that okay, we are shaping realities and what are the realities that we want to, to add in the project. Um, so the project is also having an important part of uh, the platform of functionality. So we are trying also uh, not only to go in the content by the explorative mode, but also trying to create an maybe a functional mode where people that have other needs, for example, for color contrast or for typography can access the content more directly. So it was something that was important as well in the design and the creation of the platform. Uh, so the design was uh, also creating and uh, related to some team that I will let uh, Nushin present. Thank you. Um, yeah, we clustered our contributions and this whole world that EO has just described into different themes. And for now, they are machine vision and feeling, patterns, refusal, intelligence, AI violence, future present vibrations, planet Earth, and rel relationality. And these contributions manifest as audio or video data. We have photos, research articles, essays, 3D worlds, games, and many more. So please explore it. And we also have a special format that we call the carrier bags. And in case that term sounds familiar, it comes from the carrier bag theory of fiction from Ursula Le Guin. Um, so it's inspired by that and um, it uh, works um, with the idea of not always creating new content, but actually also working with the things that are already there and weaving them, them together and highlighting what we think is important and yeah, put it into context. So these carrier bags um, basically work as a, as a gift bag, like a gift bag, gift box, um, very personalized um, from one artist to the audience who always work with one specific topic that the artist knows a lot about. And they contain many different things, um, for instance, uh, curated resources, personal anecdotes, experiences, provocations, memories, who are tied to each other by the people we work with. Um, and the idea behind it is that we, as you know, we live in a world of, uh, or an age also of algorithmic uh, curation, and we live with the promise of ever more personalized content in an endless stream. And with the carrier bags, we kind of want to create an, a contrast program, so to say, um, and envision an online and offline sharing process built on asking questions together, rather than simple information dumping. Um, 
Our goal is to enable collective sense making, community building, and dreaming. And um, uh, I just delve deeper into the to, um, into the carrier bags because I want to present two carrier bags that we have on the platform so that you also get a little bit a glimpse into um, what is there because I think you don't always uh, you you don't all have your laptops ready to check it out so we want to show you a little bit. Um, but first of all, because uh, the two carrier bags are under our theme intelligence, um, just quickly on the notion of intelligence, because it's central for our work, but also um, central to AI, as the name says. Um, and we, as a collective, are wondering how much we really want to buy into this uh, definition or the definitions of intelligence that um, that we learn here in the West, uh, in this country, for instance, um, that is so much shaped by tech determinism and also by coloniality. And we are asking um, ourselves what, what forms and ideas of intelligence do we actually want to focus on? Do we want to highlight and, and, and pursue? Or do we want to abandon the notion of intelligence completely? So these are all questions that our artists focus on. And um, I start with the carrier bag um, by the Rotterdam-based research and design studio Internet Teapot, which is Carla Savala Barreda and Adrian Odendahl. And you've seen them in the video um, very briefly. Um, they are in this carrier bag, for instance, writing about um, companies that pretend to sell automated, like completely automated services but then the actual labor is done by um, hidden click workers, a topic also Noam uh, talked about before. Um, they also write about AI moderation, uh, which is flagging combat robots as animal cruelty and many different topics. So while some of the instances they're showing, um, they seem funny, but they actually point to a bigger issue around societal trust into these very opaque machines that we call intelligent. Um, so while Carla and Adrian are examining this um, prevalent notion around in intelligence and AI that is uh, so much focused on um, in Silicon Valley, um, our contributors Nema Gitere and Petya Ivanova are advocating for a very different notion. And they uh, open their carrier bag with Intelligence has always been used as a smokescreen to justify domination. And I think that, that quote is really important. Um, and and Nema and Petya use memes, papers, podcasts, and uh, humor to question this concept of intelligence, um, which, which also means questioning this idea of the mind without the body, as well as hierarchical binaries. Um, yeah, and they, they say they question it um, as is uh, our duty as resisting cyber feminists. And they continue by discussing the original internet, which is the networks of mycelium, which I think is also um, a topic that was touched upon by the residents and in our residency process as well. And um, mycelium is so important, mycelium networks, um, because they redistribute nutrients in the forest between trees according to the needs of each tree. And Nema and Petya remind us that mycelial intelligence is that of communal support, not of domination, and that it can be a great model actually to inspire social organizations. I'm gonna present you also two other career back, but I'm gonna present you very quickly in order just for you to have like a bit teasing. If you want to know more, just go on the platform. Uh, so, for example, now I'm going to present you uh, the carrier bag of uh, Charlie, uh, the um, unreadable machine. And actually, in this carrier bag, um, Charlie's uh, very explaining as a personal subject, but also linking to many references. What is it to have our existence uh, translating to numbers? 
what is it to have like all the fluidity of our relationship and all the complexity of what is it to be a human, to be translating uh, into number, to fit actually the colonial system that want to have number for productivity and to fit the machine. Um, we also have um, another team called Refusal. That is a team actually that uh, really presents refusal as a choice, but also as a possibility generative answer to create further. And for this career back, for, for this team, we have, for example, the career back of Sarah Chandler, that is a policymaker, uh, a love letter to black and brown, queer and disabled feminist during Bayon AI. And during this career back, actually, Sarah Chandler is really going into, okay, was it dreaming? And was it dreaming Bayon AI in the context of policy making? And much more. And what is really interesting in this career bag, I think, is like um, really in the act of dreaming, I would say, like, really the complexity is not just creating an alternative reality, it's not just like dreaming about something else, but it's also an act of dismantling uh, the, the system that we are in and really by understanding it. So I'm going to just read uh, some passage of uh, uh, her career bag. So it's just like, in this case, we are dreaming beyond current extractive mode of organizing, as well extractive technology. We can learn to dream beyond by constantly seeking to dismantle and divest from the oppression in our current reality and instead of building a new. More than simply envision an utopian future, dreaming requiring a detailed understanding and feeling of all the structure of oppression currently work. Before we even starting to untangle the strands and imagine how things could be different, from far from being unrealistic, dreaming is the essence of pragmatics. That propose that all things work actually and all things are, uh, do not work, not just for us, but for everybody. I think we're now going to present you actually what we did six years about the residency. I'm going to let Sarah present. Thank you. Yes, just a few words on the theme of uh, this year's residency. And we'll talk more about the ideation of the residency itself uh, right after. So the theme was AI, uh, time and temporality. And we did call the residency in the loop, right? So we just want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, essentially, there was a lot of research that went into this um, academic research and also just conversations with our community. But the start, I think, was really, really basic questions uh, of the loop and time, just in the first sense of who even has time, right? To sit down and think about this issue. Who actually has the luxury of time to reflect, read all the books, listen to the podcast, right? Think about all of these uh, questions related to artificial intelligence. How does that influence our lives, technology, algorithm? Not everybody, yeah? So we started with this. And then also the question around the illusion of convenience that AI provides in terms of now you don't even have to go and do, do your groceries. You can just use an app, use your phone, pam, 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 three clicks, and somebody delivers that. Same for the food, same for information, right? So many things. But that is at the cost of livelihood of so many other people. So let's reflect on that in terms of gaining time, but, you know, who else is losing time? Who else is actually risking their lives on really, you know, bikes in different weathers in parts of Europe? It's a lot of precarious migrants, black and brown bodies, no? Um, and there was also the questions of uh, the loop in the sense of, you know, a lot of the violence that happens in society in real life is actually reproduced online by the algorithms, by um, technology and by AI as well. So that's the loop as well that we also really wanted to question and to explore um, with, within that theme. You want to say a bit more? Uh, I think uh, also the loop, we can see the loop like a reproduction, like this technology as a tool to reproduce inequality, but uh, the residents like uh, show very, in a wonderful way, actually, or oh, actually the loop can also be generative of like other kind of alternative and like very reconnecting with our heritage that's been stolen and that was also was wonderful. And uh, maybe I'm just gonna say a few words about the design. So in the loop, we wanted to have like a multi-directional uh, 
uh, paths that can go in the multi-sense, but also having the possibility to combine as well temporality, to combine night, day, and to really uh, having this loop to actually focus on the dialogue and to go very far from the linear way of like just um, past is dead and uh, present is now and future is tomorrow and maybe thinking more time as like a, a recursive like um, temporality and um, and yes so really going out maybe in this idea of modernity that like time is just like a line Uh, so now what you're seeing is not out yet, but as you're there, you have the right to have a peer view actually. So we are gonna, um, uh, we are also trying to uh, still connecting what's happening here uh, in the digital. And so we are uh, in progress uh, creating also a small website where you can also find all the beautiful work on the resident, but also more information about the residency by just uh, navigating the loop. So stay focused, it's going to be out. <laughs> and when Io says we, she actually means her <laughs> working on this amazing platform since the beginning, creating just the dopest, ultra cool visual and experience altogether that y'all are able to access uh, within the platform. Yes, give it up for Io. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe, um, so we talked a lot about the residency, um, but maybe you're asking yourself, okay, why did they actually want to do this residency um, in the first place? So um, I think it's also nice to um, speak about that um, for a second. So when we started out, um, it was central to us that Dreaming Beyond AI should become and be a community but uh, Dreaming Beyond AI was a COVID baby. So <laughs> we worked at uh, f um, places that were not, like we didn't live in the same um, cities. Uh, we worked a lot in the digital um, and we worked with incredible artists, but for most of them, uh, we never met them in person before. So due to COVID regulations at the time and also the long distances, we weren't able to meet in person. But working in and with the digital, it was actually, um, yeah, we all felt the need for being together in presence and with our bodies. So this was a little bit the, the feeling and the need behind that. And uh, so we wanted to have this residency on the one hand to create or to be able to um, commission new work but um, also for community building, for learning from each other, for tending to each other and resting together. And I should also say for dreaming together. Um, and yeah, so central for us was that we wanted to work both with the, um, with the, the our established, our first cohort of artists, um, as well as with new artists. And um, to make this um, special structure happen, uh, is why we asked some of our established artists like Vanessa um, to be creative sparing partners for our new residents. Um, and they, I think this is also important to say, they also became on, and shaped uh, the call for artists with us and they were also um, with us in the selection pro uh, process and we actually discussed um, around every single um, application for a long time. And yeah, uh, Sarah reminded me to also say that we had um, more than 180 applications. Yeah, which um, was very impressive for our first residents um, for, yeah, for not being out in this world for so long. So um, yeah, and I think we can really, really be proud of the um, incredible residents and works next door. So yeah, we started first thinking and brainstorming about this residency a year ago and then issued the call for applications in April um, this year. And then we selected this beautiful group in May. <laughs> um, and most of the residency was digital, but it started out with the physical in-person kickoff week on the countryside outside of Hamburg, as you've heard. and. Yeah, 
I, we couldn't resist <laughs> to show you a little bit <laughs> of um, what we did. I know it looks all like fun and fun, 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 but we also worked <laughs> <laughs> and discussed a lot. So we had, had collective uh, work sessions. Sorry? No. Um, work sessions, we went to performances and exhibitions. We had skill shares. The mentors um, shared a lot of their skills. We had free writing exercises. Um, we had a carrier bag session together. We did uh, somatics, body work, crafting. We ate a lot of good food and even our fantastic cook is here tonight. I don't know, Nina, if you're here. But um, yeah, uh, really, really thankful for this incredible experience. And so the results are now shown next door. Um, I think most of you have been um, at the presentation beforehand. Um, if you haven't experienced it yet, please go there. We have works around imagining otherwise, rewriting histories, speculating about what collaborations with machines could actually mean, um, and healing with and despite AI and with all of our senses. And now, because it has been foundational to us, um, I'm gonna hand over to Vanessa, who has been an incredible mentor, sparing partner to Bretas. Thank you for um, giving me this cute background. <laughs> And I, I told you earlier, I think we look really like well rested in this picture. I, I really <laughs> liked it. Um, I was actually, yeah, I don't even know where to start because I think um, you just briefly mentioned the like, community building. And I think that that is essentially, um, I mean, so much more also, but also essentially community building um, that you enabled because um, I think to me personally, I, I came from a phase of working where it was like complete edging breakdown and completely overwhelmed with everything. And I knew that, okay, I just have to come to Hamburg somehow, get from Berlin to Hamburg and then get to the space where we spent a week. And um, um, yeah, and I feel like it completely, it like for me personally, it really transformed something because it was a way way of showing um, or enabling a, a, a environment to work in and to to come together and and think and dream and um, also produce um, in a way. Uh, there's so many things. Um, it yeah, it just amazed me. You know, uh, what what can happen when we can come together, and how we. Um, also in working with institutions, how we also enable each other to own the space, the spaces that are usually not owned by us. Um, yeah, this is, I think this is incredible work and it's so important. Um, and concerning the mentoring or the creative sparing that we did, um, I think for Bretas and me. I mean, it feels weird for me to talk now about that. Um, but uh, what I take from it was that, um, I mean, first of all, the week coming together was really intense. It was super beautiful to just come together and uh, talk and not so, so much focus on an actual outcome, but more to bring our creative processes and our artistic practice together and uh, just exchange. And I think um, when, I, when I think about this week, I especially remember us coming together as like black Brazilian and black um, German um, people and exchanging a lot about our experiences and finding common grounds and how we reflect on this in our individual artistic practice. Um, and uh, that was super important to me. I learned a lot from that and um, yeah uh, and then going like going into the digital phase with you in Brazil and me in Germany um, this is always challenging right I mean we all know this from from uh, these two or three years or especially one year in in, uh, in remote working in remote 
Um, but I think we managed that quite well in being flexible, not just because of the time difference, but also um, because I think our, our way of working kind of matched each other's way of working, of being flexible and not doing Zoom meetings today, but then tomorrow or yeah, coming together. Uh, super nice and I think to me it's so important also to be here because one of the things with time and technology and art workers or culture workers is also that you never have time to actually um, experience what you worked on. I mean maybe you can dip uh, quickly into the exhibition but then you're out again because everything is so precarious and you already have to work on 10 other projects to kind of like stay stay on top of everything because everything goes so fast. So I really, really appreciate that I can be here to, today um, and for, the past, uh, for, for, for this time the symposium is happening and actually experience what we work together on. And it really didn't feel like to me, I didn't feel as like a mentor, I, I felt like a partner and I really felt like in community with each other and I learned so much uh, just by spending time with each other and there's so much love and I feel like it's really like the, the feminist principles of working with each other, for example, are really put into practice and I love practicing that. That's, yeah, that's really amazing. Thank you so much for that. Okay, super. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much because the, uh, I even got emotional just thinking back about that week that we all spent together because I think one thing that was also very important to us is not to reproduce so much of the extractivist behavior that so many institutions, unfortunately, you know, apply to us. And so we didn't want to like, you know, have a super packed schedule from 8 a.m. to like 9 p.m. and doing so many things and stuff. So you know, we did work. We had some creative brainstorming session and a lot of different things during the week. But we also napped and we, you know, we had food and we chilled and we like exchanged. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, that was also very beautiful. And sometimes, you know, we had to be flexible and we schedule things to the next day because we're also just humans, you know. And so we really wanted to make sure to have a, a loving and caring approach within our community because that's the basis of everything for us. And I think, yeah, it worked out pretty well. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I think what really shows, like to, to me, this really shows that um, working like that is so much better for everyone. It's just so much better for everyone. So learn from us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a lot to improve and a lot to learn, but this was a very, very special uh, experience. And to uh, come to a close uh, make sure to yeah, follow us on Instagram <laughs> follow us on Instagram tag us on the content tell your friends to follow us uh, we have a newsletter as well that you can find through the main platform first of all go to the main platform okay dreamingbeyond.ai Okay, uh, there's the explorative uh, modes, the functional modes, there are different languages, so take your time with it. And then through the platform, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and yeah, I think that's mostly where we're at. Yes, a podcast. We also have a podcast. <laughs> so um, we have upcoming episodes where we actually had interviews of our beloved residents during the residency. And two of the interviews also happened after the residency. So stay tuned. You can still, or, I mean, you can already follow and subscribe on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all the podcast platforms. The episodes will be published in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that as well. Yes. Cool. I think that was it for us. Thank you so much. We want to have space for conversations, questions, but thank you for being here. We appreciate you very much. We have a question over there. I don't know how we work. We quite do I have a mic passing by or or yes, we do have a mic here. It's coming. Where's the question? Sorry. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hi. Thank you for this Hi. presentation. Um, 
I was wondering if, or like I, one thing I really love is this word dreaming that you use in your in your work. And I just wanted uh, to know a little bit more about it. Was there a um, preliminary discussion you had to have about what dreaming entails? Um, what forms of dreaming there are? Um, and how does that influence your artistic work? Um, so, yes, uh, I don't know if I'm going to reply to the question because I'm, I'm not sure that I'm going to reply exactly well to the question, but I think uh, for us uh, it was really important to do not only uh, dream but also to create a container uh, for dream because the act of dreaming can like... Uh, uh, yes, we can, as you mentioned, like work, um, discuss about the tale and like uh, uh, trying to influence like what is it to dream. But for us, it was really important as well to have like a place where the dream can come true in a way because uh, this place where dreams um, are being carried also have a deep meaning on uh, the dream and a very important aspect on the dream and like uh, um, you can dream but depending where you're dreaming who on your dream your dream will have a very different a very um, different signification and so I don't know if I'm replaying well to the to the question but I think it was very important for us uh, to be a community that can carry together the dream of each other, actually, in order that we could shape and we could have more agency on uh, the reality and uh, the creativity of the dream. So, I, is it? I think so. I just wanted to know, you know, like some of your thoughts. Like, I don't think there's a probably yes. like a definite answer. But yes, I think Thank that you. there is an act of dreaming, and then there is an act also of like. Uh, carrying all together this and it was something that was very 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 important for us as an as a community as people being together like let's carry the dream of each other uh, in order to have more power into the meaning of our dream it's something that was important yeah that sounds very powerful definitely thank you <laughs> i just want to add real quick also that i do strongly believe that in a society that is so brutal uh, dreaming is a rebellious act, you know, and making time for this and like, you know, uh, creating space where we can actually sit down and be like, okay, but this can't be it. Like, let us, woof, let us <laughs> think a dream of, you know, what else could it be? And like, you know, if you, if you think of your dream environment, your dream community, who's around you? How does it feel? What do you want, you know, to have access to and things like that? I think I'm the dream of my ancestors and I really hope that my dreams and the things that I think about, you know, will be the reality for future generations as well. So I think this was also a very important part of what we tried to create uh, because that's a, yeah, big revolution. Um, maybe just adding to that, just a tiny note, also not just um, Dreaming, but dreaming also means sleeping, also means napping. And um, I personally learn learn a lot from uh, these babes that um, yeah, that uh, we don't always have to produce every every second and just um, work work work, but to also rest and take time and think about what do we actually want want to create. And um, adding to this idea of like how do we want to shape the world that we um, exist in and, and deviating from all, from all those uh, so-called utopias or dystopias that we see in the media so much. Um, it's, so it's on that big level for me, but it's also on the very small levels of how do we relate to each other for like all the tiny, tiny, tiny details um, that were involved in the residency and that were uh, us relating to each other and discussing how we want to work with each other and it, through this project I really really um, learned relearned in you um, that like every tiny detail is so important not in the sense of oh my god so much pressure but also that we really um, coming back to Adrian Marie Brown, <laughs> that we go from the little to the big and that we can really live um, the feminist ways from the tiniest interactions um, to the big ones. 
That actually reminds me of the book that was laying on my bed when I came into the residency space because we were all gifted books individually. Um, and it, mine was Trisha Hersey's Rest and Resistance. Very personalized. <laughs> yes, very, actually very personalized, which is also laying there uh, in the other room where you can take a look at. Uh, yeah. Just a quick note on this one, because our dearest notion over here uh, has amazing attention to details and is very, very caring. And so um, she actually prepared small gift packs for everyone involved in the residency, including team members, creative sparring partners and the residents with personalized books and a little yoga mat and some candies and little notes and that's also when we talk about the details socks because it was cold so we had socks and so you know when we talk about the details and about care and community that's also what it means so just want to shout out to Noshin for the care <laughs> any other questions suggestions book recommendations yeah, the books in the next room uh, were actually, so of course they're not by us, but um, they inspired us in this project and for the residency. So we thought that we would also bring them here so you could relax in these amazing, uh, designed by Io Beanbags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, just get a little cozy. Maybe I have a question. Yeah. I try uh, to... Um, a little bit chaotic in my head but there um, are topics like time and like productivity and timelines and I wanted to ask you what are your experience or thoughts about like exclusion um, because of time in this co um, collective or in this uh, process of, of arts or yeah mm. uh, uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> one thing that comes to mind um, is, and we talked about this during uh, Noam's workshop earlier, Noam's is one of our residents, uh, I think they might have gone because they were really sick, but um, um, they provided an amazing workshop this morning, um, and there were conversations because I think one of the, the, the main topic of their work is around also the, the precarious creative uh, workers and people working in the cultural field and such, and I think one person shared the fact that just answering to call for applications is a full-time job and again who has time to sit down and do this you know and create like this this again uh, um, tailor-made applications for this fund that you might or might not get you know do you have the vocabulary for this do you have a community to support you in this do you have contacts that you know maybe know people inside the institution so all of these privileges or non-privileges that are at play and the time that it takes to actually sustain yourself sustain your creative practice sustain your art um, so I do feel like there's a lot of exclusion dynamics when it comes to that. And and that's why a lot of the times we see the same people securing the gigs, catching the call for applications, being successful in this because it requires a lot of time. So that's just one example that comes to mind. If the residents, I see some residents also in the room, if y'all want to answer, please feel free to grab the mic. Okay. <laughs> Can repeat the question? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just um, some words I have in mind. I mean, I don't know. It's about um, maybe making art, even in a collective, or being product productive, um, maybe in the theme of illness or um, boundaries. And what are your thoughts about that? You know, um, oh, it's very hard to, because I already heard a lot <laughs> from you, and now it's hard to repeat the same question. Um, yeah, how it's maybe your experience with um, having a timeline and then um, being ex excluded because of time, uh, of the concept of time we have, you know? Because uh, it's kind of normal that it's uh, a timeline and then you, then you finish and then it's maybe an exhibition or uh, in, um, in an exam or something like that. Yeah. 
I, I do think uh, that the way that we structure the artworks, like the ways of working with, with art, are still like really bound to privileges that that, that have, as Sarah was saying, uh, dealing with time, because you know um, all this idea about like. Uh, about having time i think what what was like really fertile in this residency is that we had time to structure our um, thoughts about it and me and vanessa we talk a lot about really more than than doing but thinking and giving it because uh, art is definitely about how we can get to emotions in other people but and this takes time you know, you know uh, also like also thinking about what you're talking what i'm talking about takes time to to structure but yeah um what came to my mind when you're saying uh repeating your your, your question is um why these deadlines in in timelines are always so so su such a thing that there's nothing like it looks almost a deadline looks almost ap apocalyptic in that sense like why if we have a deadline from um does the artwork stops when uh the deadline ends you know um because if then it would look like as a product or something like this but art is not like this it keeps developing itself and um for my artworks i always like uh tend to think of about them really different like when because i i love this uh like time is the real alchemist of the things you know it changed things uh and we can't stop it from, from changing so so yeah uh, that's where the comments are ready um, so going back to the uh, gnomes workshop this morning um yeah we were talking about time and whether people think it's a privilege to have the time to choose the artist's life and all of this and i was like yeah it's 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 not like a black and white thing like i have time because i cannot physically work full time which means i don't have uh opportunities to provide for myself even though i'm living all the time like we all are um so it's just like yeah it is really a privilege to be able to survive i uh, guess um um but i it's something that takes like a lot of time to cultivate people who can help you survive um, and I do spend a lot of time doing that, and I, I just have to keep coming back to being grateful because I'm grateful for the support that I receive. I Thank just you. Uh, want to add very quickly uh, something that, um, unfortunately, in the capitalist societies that we're all living, time is money. And also what you were saying by having people to help you, uh, it means having a community or it means having money to pay for people to provide time. And so by talking with time and uh, exclusion, it's also talking about uh, just uh, the economic systems that we're living and who we'll have access to money actually to start having time. Unfortunately, so it's a world point uh, on the reflection, uh, like the precarity, uh, as Noan was talking in the workshop as well, that uh, as us as creative, but uh, much more in general, like uh, when I'm seeing sometimes some uh, places, activist places that are not really interested in to, um, technology right now and the arm of technology because I don't have time because it not seems that's an emergency because the emergency is elsewhere. There is all the question of like, okay, who have money uh, to just uh, live, to 
just escape, not really escape because system of oppression are going beyond money, but just to try to escape a bit more uh, the reality of the world than we live in. So I think, uh, yes, it was just um, one of the important Thank you so much. Uh, we are arriving at time. I think we uh, slightly <laughs> over time. <laughs> and we're trying to be respectful of time. So uh, <laughs> coming to a close, just wanted to thank you so much to everybody for being here. We appreciate your presence. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. So number one, make sure to check out the platform whenever you have time. Number two, if you, have if you don't have plans tonight, actually, even if you have plans tonight, cancel them because <laughs> at 8.30 on the room next door, there is an amazing show by our friends at Digital Feminism who are just beloved friends of Dreaming Beyond AI. Hey. And we were there yesterday. And let me tell you, you don't want to miss this. This was mind-blowing, amazing, just a great experience. So a wonderful thing to do on a Saturday night. 8.30, you can still get tickets, tell your friend to tell a friend, show up. It's in, uh, so it's seven, so it's an hour and a half. You still have time to have cute dinner situation. So yeah, just wanted to give a little promo and shout out to Digital Feminism. Thank you. Yeah.